first video in this series gave you a basic introduction to contour lines. In this one, I'll show you how to recognize topographic features using those lines. I'll also introduce some terms that will help you talk about the terrain you see. When I explained the concept of contour lines in the first video, I used this bullseye pattern based on an upside-down funnel. Looking straight down, Cabazon Peak is fairly round, but it's much less symmetrical than the bullseye pattern. The deviations from perfect symmetry are important because they tell you about the local terrain. These contour lines are so wiggly because the sides of Cabazon Peak consist of ridges and valleys. To see those topographic details, you need to learn a couple of rules. First, where the contour lines bend out from the center of the hill, that's a ridge, even if it's a very short and steep ridge, hardly worth the name. Here the arrows show three ridges, marked by contour lines bending out from Cabazon Peak. Rule number two, where the contour lines bend toward the center of the hill, that's a valley, even if it's a small, near-vertical gulch. Here the arrows show three valleys, marked by contour lines bending into the peak. If you're not dealing with an obvious hill, the same rules apply in modified form. Wherever contour lines point from a higher elevation toward a lower elevation, that's a ridge, even if it's a very small and gentle one. Here the arrows indicate three low ridges near Cabazon Peak. Wherever contour lines point from a lower elevation toward a higher elevation, that's a valley, even if it's a small, shallow one. Here the arrows point up three valleys. Some valleys are marked with blue lines indicating streams, which will help you learn the difference between ridges and valleys. Eventually, you won't need that clue. In a few places on this map, the contour lines are widely spaced. Those parts of the landscape are almost flat. Here the X's indicate several of the gentlest slopes near Cabazon Peak. If you're looking for a place to camp, that's the sort of place to look for. Up to now I've used the word ridge to refer to places that stick out from the local terrain. Sometimes isolated hills or mountains are stretched out, in which case the entire hill or mountain is often called a ridge. This is U-Bar Ridge in southwest New Mexico. Here the contour lines aren't just stretched out, they're indicating an isolated ridge shaped like a fishhook. I used this map segment at the start of the video series. Hopefully by now you're seeing ridges and valleys, but in case you aren't, I'll mark them. The two red arrows show the main ridges on this map segment, with Calaveras Canyon between them. Both ridges actually point out from higher terrain north of here. The ridges have been chewed up by erosion, creating smaller side ridges. Just like the first rule states, the contours for these side ridges bend out from the main ridge. The blue arrows show the main valleys. Here I added arrows to show three side valleys. If you pause the video and look carefully, you can tell that the streams flow in the directions of the arrows. That's because the arrows point from higher contour lines to lower ones. Just like the second rule states, the contour lines for the valleys bend into higher terrain. Once you can tell a ridge from a valley, you need to know how to recognize a cliff. For most hikers, cliffs are impassable barriers. But if you can see them on your topographic map, you can determine a route around them. The steeper the local terrain, the closer together the contour lines. When the contour lines run together on a map, that means there's a lot of change in vertical distance with little or no change in horizontal distance. In other words, a cliff. Here's a series of jammed together contour lines snaking across the map. That should tell you that you're dealing with cliffs or something very close. In fact, you're looking at part of Mesa Portales in New Mexico with the top of the mesa to the left. Here's what that side of Mesa Portales looks like. It's not quite vertical, but mostly it's steep enough to be impassable. If you're a hiker, it's useful to have terms to describe the finer details of a landscape. If the top of a ridge or other hill is bumpy, you can refer to those bumps as knolls if they're small, or peaks if they're large. Here the map indicates three knolls or peaks on top of a ridge. The low point between two knolls or peaks, or between a knoll and a higher part of the ridge, is a saddle. If a saddle is a travel route, it's known as a pass. 
This part of southern New Mexico is full of knolls and saddles. You might want to pause the video and see whether you can pick them out without my help. In a moment, I'll point out a few examples. Here's a ridge with several knolls north of the main peak and with saddles between the knolls. I know that the main peak is south of those knolls because it's drawn with more contour lines. Here's another ridge with a fairly long saddle between two knolls. But let's look at this inconspicuous loop. Knolls can occur on the sides of hills or ridges as well as on top of them. And every time there's a knoll on a slope, there's a saddle between the knoll and the higher part of the hill. At this point, you may be asking yourself, why do I need to know all this? So let's apply something you just learned. This map shows part of the Sandia Mountains near Albuquerque. Suppose I want to find a flat place to camp somewhere near the center of this map. Here's how I proceed. The contours tell me that the terrain is steep. The arrow indicates a 400 foot gain over a 1900 foot distance. That means we're dealing with a more than 20% slope. In terrain like that, campsites are few and far between. I can see a couple of valleys thanks to the contour lines bending uphill. Besides, they're marked as canyons. But I won't look for a campsite there even if there's water because the contours are closer together in the valleys than on the slope between them. That indicates that the valleys are especially steep. Fortunately, the slope includes several knolls. Sometimes the tops of knolls are flat enough for camping, but I'd start looking for a campsite next to that knoll at this spot, which is a saddle between the knoll and the main ridge. In my experience, when you're on a mountainside, the most likely location for a flat campsite is a saddle. So here's one place where I'd look. I might try this saddle instead. If my goal was to camp near the springs on the map, I might check out this saddle. If I'm trying to find a flat spot big enough for one tent, it might be big enough. In the next video in this series, I'll continue to look at contour lines. Once we've covered that topic completely, I'll move on to other types of information on topographic maps.